Female Afghan politician Hanifa Safi killed. A prominent female Afghan politician has been killed in a bomb attack in eastern Afghanistan, officials say. Hanifa Safi died after a bomb attached to her car exploded as, the, as she left her home in Lahman province. Her husband and daughter were injured. As the provincial head of the Afghan Ministry of Women's Affairs, Mrs. Safi had for years been leading advocate of fair treatment for women. She had been known locally for going out without her head covered. That was against the conservative interpretation of Islam practiced by many in Afghanistan and might have brought her to the attention of the Taliban. The BBC's David Lloyd in Kabul reports. However, no group has so far claimed responsibility for the attack. The killing of Mrs. Safi is a reminder of the perilous life lived by so many Afghan women and comes only a week after a video emerged of the killing of a woman said to have run away from her husband, our reporters say. Government officials are frequently targeted by militants in Afghanistan, but it's much less usual for female officials to be killed. In 2006, Safia Amajan, who headed the Kandahar Department of Women's Affairs, was shot dead by Taliban attackers. Four arrested over assault of a girl in Azam state. At least four people have been arrested after a group of men indecently assaulted a teenage girl on a busy road in India's Assam state. There has been outrage after footage emerged showing men passing the girl between them trying to remove her top. Many critics are calling on the police to arrest those visible in the video. Police say at least 12 of the attackers have been identified from the footage. The incident took place on Monday night in the state capital, Guwahati. All those identified with the brutal assault will be arrested, Assam Police Chief Jain Chowdhury told reporters on Friday. He said the girl was attending a birthday party in a bar where she apparently had heat an argument with some young men. The bar evicted all of them to avoid a rakak, he said. As she came out, some men attacked her and this unfortunate even happened. We will do all we can to punish the culprits, Mr. Choudhury said. The incident has so angered residents of Guwahati, some have put up a billboard in a busy city area demanding tough action against those involved. The U.S. Treasury said it had blacklisted several companies and individuals that it believes are contributing to efforts to acquire nuclear weapons. It also said it had identified several companies and banks acting as friend organizations, helping Iran to evade existing sanctions. Iran insists its nuclear program is purely for peaceful purposes. We will continue to ratchet up the pressure so long as Iran refuses to address the international community's well-founded concerns about its nuclear program. U.S. Treasury official David Cohen said. He added that the latest steps were aimed at disrupting Iran's nuclear and ballistic missile programs as well as its deceptive efforts to use front companies to sell and move its oil. The blacklisting measure targeted 11 companies involved in Iran's nuclear and ballistic missiles programs and with links to the Defense Ministry the Revolutionary Guards and the National Shipping Line, the U.S. Treasury statement said. They also covered four individuals said to be supporting Iran's nuclear program, among them the commander of the Revolutionary Guards, Navy Ali Fadavi. In addition, the Treasury identified four entities, Petro Swiss Intertrade, Hong Kong Intertrade, Noor Energy and Petro Energy Intertrade as front companies used to enable evade sanctions on its oil exports. All four were accused of being fronts for Iran's national oil company. If we can easily get up to 11.4, 11.8 almost immediately in a few days because all we need is turn valves now to get to the next 700 or so we probably need 
about 90 days. We'll move on to the business world. JP Morgan Chase raises its recent trading close to dollars 4.4 billion. JP Morgan Chase has more than doubled its estimate of recent losses for trading in complex financial derivatives to dollars 4.4 billion. The U.S. bank said the executives responsible had been dismissed without severance pay and the bank would be clawing back two years of their pay. Despite the revelation, J.P. Morgan also reported a surprisingly strong three-month net profit of dollars 4.96 billion. The bank shares rose more than 5% on the news in the New York morning trading. The profit figure for the three months to 30 June was down 8.7% from the same period last year, but was nonetheless much higher than analyst expectations. I think it's not a good a good move. I mean, at the end of the day, this guy did pride himself on being able to weather the storm back over the, the, the last few years. And this is something, especially in the height of where regulations are taking place and the Volcker rule due to come into effect in July does not bode well for the, the actual bank itself. Welcome to the World of Signs. Lemurs sliding towards extinction. A new survey shows lemurs are far more threatened than previously thought. A group of specialists in Madagascar, the only place where the lemurs are found in the wild, to systematically assess the animals and decide where they sit on the red list of the threatened species. More than 90% of 103 species should be on the red list, they say. Since a coup in 2009, conservation groups have repeatedly found evidence of illegal logging and hunting of lemurs have emerged as a new threat. The assessment conducted by the Primate Specialist Group of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, IUCN, concludes that 23 lemurs qualify as critically endangered, the highest class of threat. And in sports, John Terry cleared for racism against Anton Ferdinand. Ex England captain John Terry has been cleared of racially abusing fellow footballer Anton Ferdinand. The Chelsea and England defender had denied making the comments to the Queen's Park Rangers player during a match at Loftus Road last October. The 31-year-old told Westminster Magistrates, quote, he was merely repeating what he thought Mr. Ferdinand had said to him as they traded insults. The FA had said the inquiry into the incident will resume next week. Mr. Terry had described himself as an angry and upset over the claims it was alleged he had insulted Mr. Ferdinand in a Premier League match, describing him as a black and using extreme sexual swear words. And now before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main points. German circumcision ban. Is parents right to choose? Syria unrest. Coffee and shocked at Tramsha atrocities. Russian parliament adopts NGO foreign agents bill. Female Afghan politician Anifa Safi killed. Four arrested over assault of a girl in Assam state. US tightened sanctions over Iran nuclear program. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.